What's up, dinguses? It's that time again when I come at you with another ill-advised music tier list video that I didn't write a script for. After listening to the feedback from my last tier list video on ska bands, there seemed to be more of a debate on what was ska or what wasn't ska. Wherever you fall on calling one band or artist more of one genre than another, I think we can all agree that there's one genre that's pretty clear cut and dry. I'm talking about classic rock. We all probably grew up listening to the same music our parents did, but after about the age of seven years old, you go ahead and you fuck off and you listen to whatever the hell you want to. But not for me, I just kept getting into more and more classic rock. So much so that in middle school people made fun of me for wearing Grateful Dead shirts and them not knowing what the hell that was. And even today I find myself going back to a lot of classic rock just because there is so much content these days that you might as well go with what you know works. So today I thought it would be fun to go ahead and break down some of the greatest classic rock bands of all time and rank them on a tier list. And when I mean classic rock, I am talking about bands that more or less got big in the mid 60s up into the mid to slightly late 80s. Just because Nirvana and Pearl Jam are being played on classic rock radio stations nowadays does not make them classic rock. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have the Allman Brothers Band, and if you play guitar and you're unaware of who Dickie Betts is, start playing bass. Dickie Betts, along with Dwayne Allman, really made one of the best guitar tag teams in all of rock. And before you say you don't know who the Allman Brothers are, if you've watched Top Gear, Yes, you do. If you wanted to plug the Allman Brothers into a certain subgenre of rock and roll, it would definitely be Southern rock. However, I feel like a lot of their tracks kind of deviate from this just a little bit, and it's just great music in general. And for that, we'll be placing the Allman Brothers in the A tier. Keep in mind that I'm going to be skipping over a lot of the nitty gritty details on a lot of your favorite classic rock artists, but given the nature of the video, that's kind of what I have to do. If you'd like for me to take a deeper dive into any one of these bands, drop a comment. Moving on, we have ACDC, and you can't argue their influence in pop culture. Sometimes it feels that ACDC is really the go-to band whenever you need a hard rock song plugged into a soundtrack. They're insanely commercial and arguably overplayed, but that shouldn't take away for just how talented Angus Young is at guitar. And of course, there's the common argument that all ACDC songs sound the same, and I'd have to agree. But that one song is kick-ass. There's something to be said about a band evolving over time, like take Pink Floyd for example. Piper's at the Gates of Dawn does not sound like the final cut. Between those two projects and every other album in between was an extension of where the artists and songwriters were at that time. But there's also something to be said about a band finding what works and sticking with it for 40 plus years. One of my favorite things about ACDC are the two lead singers that they've had in their time, Bon Scott and Brian Johnson. Bon Scott had this raspy, yelly, scrappy kind of voice that was just perfect for harder blues rock. And unfortunately, when he died, ACDC was kind of without one of their gems. But somehow, they found somebody that sounded almost exactly like him in Brian Johnson. Although I think Brian Johnson screams a little bit more. But nevertheless, ACDC will be joining the Allman Brothers in the A tier. Next up is Alice Cooper, and he's okay. I'm sure this might anger some of Alice Cooper's fans because the people that love Alice Cooper fucking love Alice Cooper. No, no, no. Stick around. Hang out with us. Cool. Yeah, we'll stay and hang around with you us with Alice Cooper. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Let me know if you've had a similar experience because as somebody who grew up in the early 2000s, Alice Cooper made some pretty accessible songs to get into rock and roll with songs like School's Out. And much of that had to do with its inclusion on the Guitar Hero 3 soundtrack. And I know for a fact that Alice Cooper was out on the road touring in 2023, so I'm sure his live sets are just as crazy as they ever used to be. But I think my complaint about Alice Cooper is the same complaint I have about contemporary bands like Ghost. I just don't think the aesthetic really matches the music. There's, there's like a clash. Alice Cooper's not bad at all, but definitely kind of mid in my opinion. A stand-up guy by all accounts, but... C tier. Next up is Aerosmith, and I had an unhealthy obsession with Aerosmith that no boy growing up in the early 2000s should have had. Again, I think this was an extension of the popularity of the Guitar Hero games with Guitar Hero Aerosmith, but I just thought that Joe Perry was the coolest person ever. Aerosmith just had sweet riffs, and Steven Tyler's voice is objectively awesome, I think. Aerosmith will always be a quintessential 70s band to me, even though they had albums and singles in the 90s that had a lot of success but they sounded a little bit too different from what they were doing back in the day, and what they were doing back in the day was much better. Plus, not to mention all the crazy news that's coming out 
about them. Aerosmith is B tier. Next up is the band Bad Company, and I hope none of us find ourselves in Bad Company because everybody should like the song Bad Company off the album Bad Company by the band Bad Company. I like Bad Company. Bad Company is good. B tier. Beatles are S tier. I already put them up there. I'm not going to talk to you about why the Beatles are the greatest band of all time, but they are. If you say you hate the Beatles, you're just an edgelord because that doesn't make any sense. Also, I'll put the link to this tier list down in the description so you can go ahead and play around with it yourself. But one very big critique I found of this tier list is no inclusion of the Beach Boys. So just for the record, I want to state that the Beach Boys are also an S tier classic rock band. I think Brian Wilson has a real strong case to be one of the greatest American songwriters ever. Pet Sounds is an absolute masterclass. You can watch tons of videos on YouTube as to why that is. And in the year of our Lord, 2024, the Beach Boys are still playing shows. Go check them out when you can, because I highly doubt they'll be around for much longer. Next up, we have Billy Joel, and Billy Joel stands to be the only reason why I would ever want to be a New Yorker. He just paints such a romantic picture of what it's like to be in New York, to live in New York, to be New York. I also think it's incredibly fitting to, for him to be one of the only people, if not the only person, to ever have a residency at Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena on the planet. If you've never listened to The Stranger, please do so at your earliest convenience. For me, it's 100% a no-skips album. I have family members that don't like Billy Joel, and that's probably the reason why I don't talk to them. A tier. Next up, we got Blue Oyster Cult. I like Blue Oyster Cult. B tier. Next up is Bon Jovi. I do not like Bon Jovi, nor should you. F tier. Next up we have Boston, and in my last video, you might remember me saying that there was only three good things that ever came out of Boston. The American Revolution, Cheers, and the Mighty Mighty Bostones. Well, you can add a fourth to that, the band Boston. I think Brad Delp has one of the best vocals of any lead singer in classic rock, and that self-titled album they have is just terrific. A tier. So here's the thing about Bruce Springsteen. I understand why people enjoy Bruce Springsteen. He makes listening to a song written about a fucking turnpike feel like you're reading a Robert Frost poem. And with the inclusion of the E Street Band, you're getting this big epic sound for what it is to be an American. Despite all that, it's boring as shit and I don't like it. I think it's great that people love Bruce Springsteen as much as they do. What I often say about bands that I don't like is that people I love, love them, so they're okay, I guess. And Bruce Springsteen is definitely one of those acts for me. I might be showing my age a little bit too much on this one because I know there's people of a certain generation who love Bruce Springsteen and will do anything to evangelize his name. So I'm sorry to say it, but Bruce is in D tier. Now let's say you're somebody who might pick up on the vibe that Bruce Springsteen is laying down, but you're not quite there with him yet. I would definitely recommend Bob Seger. Between Against the Wind and Hollywood Nights, Bob Seger, he, <laughs> he's the best. I think Bob Seger has a great blend of taking his influences from the 1950s and really pushing some of the boundaries of the genre at the time with songs like Turn the Page. Turn the Page also has an incredible live version, which also stands to be one of those instances where the live version is better than the studio recording. Yeah, Bob Seger's great. A tier. It might worry you that I'm putting a lot of these bands in A tier, but they're good. I like them and so should you. But thankfully, as we run down this alphabetical list, we get our next S tier band in Black Sabbath. There's people out there that will swear by one version of Sabbath more than the other, those versions being the Ozzy version or the Dio version. And I'm here to promote the secret third option, which is enjoying both. Of course, we give a lot of credit to Ozzy, as we should, because that original lineup of Black Sabbath ushered in an entire new genre of music, or at least helped to. Also, Black Sabbath might have the most metal origin story, which I think is really fitting. The legendary guitarist of Black Sabbath, Tony Iommi, lost the tips of two of his fingers in a metal sheet factory. It was on his last day of work, so he ended up fashioning these two nubs that he put on his finger so he could still play guitar. Like, how... What? What? And also, let's not forget about Heaven and Hell, the first album after Ozzy left and Dio came in. It's fantastic. So I don't buy any of this Ozzy or Dio crap. Like it all. It's all good. It's all some of the best music that's ever been made. Next up, we have The Cars, and their self-titled debut album stacks right up with Weezer's self-titled debut album as the best debut album of all time. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. 
because it's one thing for a band to get into their recording rhythm and see the vision of an album a couple albums into the process but i think the cars found their stride with their debut album because it is hit after hit after hit I'm one of those boomer zoomers that listens to the radio in their car, and I have a classic rock station on my presets. And I tend to roll my eyes at a lot of the songs that they just keep playing over and over and over again. That is, until they play the cars, and that shit stays on. I think their second album, Candio, was also a very good follow-up effort. I don't happen to like their big hit, Drive, but hey, 99% ain't bad. Cars go in the A tier. CCR or Credence Clearwater Revival is S tier. CCR is one of those instances where it's actually kind of nice to let the control freak control. Any CCR song you might know was written by John Fogarty, the objective leader of the band. But through the 60s and into the 70s, the band kind of got fed up with how much control John Fogarty had, and they insisted that either they write some songs or they leave. So Fogarty acquiesced, let the band write some songs, and it sucked. But despite that, everything they had done before that stands to be some of the greatest music, not just rock and roll. Put that shit in the congressional archives or whatever the fuck they do. Next up we have Chicago, and I've always found it interesting what Chicago some people like and what Chicago other people don't like. One thing I really appreciate about Chicago is that for the first 20 or so albums that they had, they titled them in sequential order. Chicago 1, Chicago 2, Chicago 3, Chicago 4, Chicago 5, Chicago 6, Chicago 7, which is what got me into the band. And I could talk about literally any one number of Chicago's albums, but what I find great about Chicago 7 is that you don't get a single lyric until you're like 20 minutes into the album. Chicago has this big band lineup filled with absolutely talented musicians and producers. And so the album starts out with just a lot of musical themes and instrumentation. To where by the time you get to the first song that has lyrics, you've really felt like you've crossed one world and into another. Chicago's great, A tier. Controversially, I'm gonna put Cream in C tier just because Eric Clapton is fucking crazy, and I will elaborate no further. Next up, we have Crosby, Sills, Nash & Young, and I'll talk favorably about it, but I got some opinions. I think the songwriting team of Graham, Nash, Stephen Stills, and David Crosby stands to be the best songwriting trio in music. At least none that I can think off the top of my head without a script. Between the songwriting and the harmonies that they got into, it's really hard to argue this case. And it is classic rock, but I feel like the more appropriate genre, or maybe even subgenre, would be American folk rock? Nevertheless, they've made some of the best music that's ever been made, and that stood true when they brought in Neil Young into the mix to form Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. C-S-N-Y. More like C-S-N-Y. I, 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 I don't, I don't like Neil Young. I do love singers that have unconventional singing voices like Bob Dylan or maybe even a more current one would be Jeff Tweedy of Wilco. I think all the music that came out of CSNY was great and Neil Young definitely served his place there because that band definitely needed more egos to throw around. But I'd be lying if I said I wish it would have just stayed as CSN. But that's my personal beef. You can either disagree with me or agree with me. I'm still going to make dumb YouTube videos regardless. But despite my hatred of Neil Young, CSNY are S tier. So is David Bowie. Happy Pride Month. But Def Leppard certainly is not. F tier. So like I said, I was a child of classic rock. And as a child of classic rock, I had a hair metal phase 20 years past the point where I should have. While I think that hair metal wasn't the proudest moment that rock ever had by any means, you still had some great tunes coming out of it. Like if we're talking about some of the best hair metal bands of all time, I think you put Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue in as objectively pretty damn good. I think Def Leppard encapsulates everything bad about hair metal. I don't know, it, it's just a lot of, you know, oh, women and, and, uh, and, and drugs. Yay. Although I do think it was pretty cool that they allowed their drummer to be in the band despite unfortunately having multiple limbs amputated. And so he played with an accessible drum kit, which, I mean, come on, that's, that's cool. The next band on the list was Deep Purple, but I'm gonna be honest with you, Outside of Smoke on the Water, I've never really listened to Deep Purple, so I'm not going to comment on it. If you're a Deep Purple fan, let me know down in the comments why I should listen to Deep Purple. Moving on though, we'll talk about the Dire Straits and the most underrated guitarist in all of rock, Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler plays the guitar like he's praying to the guitar and making sweet, sweet love to the guitar at the exact same time. And the Dire Straits did a great job at pulling from multiple genres for their music. Like you hear a lot of blues and maybe American country music in their first couple albums, 
But then by the time Money for Nothing and Chicks for Free came out, you're looking at a contemporary rock song that was kind of pushing the boundaries of the genre. Pushing it in the sense with that music video. Anyway, Dire Straits, A tier. Next up is Eagles and their S tier with or without Joe Walsh. And I'm gonna move on really quickly because I know I'm gonna call them the Eagles when in actuality they're just called Eagles and I don't wanna mess that up. And I know when I'm editing this video, I'm gonna be kicking myself in the balls for how many times I say the Eagles as opposed to Eagles. But yeah, Eagles are S tier. Man, come on, I had a rough night and I hate the fucking Eagles. Eric Clapton's F tier because you're a crazy fuck. I'm talking to you, Eric Clapton. Moving on, ELO or Electric Light Orchestra might stand to be one of those bands for me that I really wish I was born in a different time period. I've heard stories of those shows back in the 70s being some of the greatest spectacles around. And if you're a young whippersnapper, maybe you've heard this song. <laughs> To that point, I do think it's weird what classic rock songs have really sifted through the cracks to be relevant with the kids today. On that same note though, it's kind of unfortunate because that might be the one song that people know from that artist. And with ELO, I am not going to be ashamed to admit that it took me forever to find their song Mama Bell and how great of a song that is. Yeah, I think Jeff Lynne is a genius and ELO is fantastic. A tier. Moving on, F tier stands for Foreigner. Foreigner being an F-tier classic rock band to me was a relatively recent realization. Like I said, I grew up listening to classic rock, and at that time, growing up, Foreigner was one of my favorites. But then I started catching up with the times and started listening to a lot more contemporary music, and for the most part, all contemporary music, and I left my classic rock days behind. But in the last couple of years, I went back to revisit Foreigner, and I was so unimpressed and disappointed. I don't know, like it used to all hit really well and now it just doesn't. To where now the only good thing about Foreigner is this video of Paul McCartney. Foreigner, not in the Hall of Fame. What the fuck? Oh, Paul, you strange old man. So I've put Fleetwood Mac in A tier, and before all the kids of my generation start typing in the comments as to why I'm wrong and they should be S tier, let me ask you this. Have you listened to a Fleetwood Mac album that wasn't Rumors? Name me one song off of Tusk. I dare you. Rumors is one of the best albums of all time. I think it has a strong case for being the best album of all time. And Rumors got really big when I was in college, but after a while, I started to feel like Maynard James Keenan in this video. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac is awesome. Good day for witches. Moving on, we have the Grateful Dead, and if you've seen my prior videos on crazy fan bases, go watch them if you haven't yet. We've talked about the band extensively. And as we look at the rest of this tier list, I don't know how well the Grateful Dead stack up musically with a lot of the bands in the higher echelon of this list, but none of these bands can really touch the cultural impact of the Grateful Dead. That is birthing an entire culture of people. Like, you can't really pick out a beetle head at Whole Foods, but you can certainly pick out a deadhead at Whole Foods. And this is coming from somebody who identifies as a deadhead. I love the Grateful Dead. I don't know, on a good day, I think the Grateful Dead are a low A-tier classic rock band, and on a bad day, they're a high B. We'll put them in high B just for now. Our next S-tier classic rock band is Genesis. Much like the Black Sabbath debate, I don't really pick a team as far as which version of Genesis was better, the Peter Gabriel version or the Phil Collins version. But with that being said, both versions are pretty different. The more progressive stylings of the Peter Gabriel-led Genesis differ greatly from the more pop-centric direction that they were going in under Phil Collins. But I think it's so weird that all of it still feels like Genesis. One could argue that that's because Phil Collins was in it the entire time and we felt his influence during the Peter Gabriel days, or that Peter Gabriel laid down the groundwork for the road that Genesis would have to build after he left. Whether it's Watchers of the Sky or Invisible Touch, you really can't go wrong with Genesis. Next up is Guns N' Roses, and as you can see, I've placed them in the B tier. For as an incredible album as Appetite for Destruction is, being the best hair metal band is still kind of like being the tallest first grader. Yeah, okay, you're the tallest first grader, but half of second grade still taller than you, so what you got? Next up we have Heart, and I'm gonna place them in A tier. For all the accolades that the Wilson sisters continue to get to this day, 
I don't think they get enough. Like, I've read that the opinion back in the day for Heart was that, yeah, Heart's good for being girls. Fuck you. Heart's great. Also, I love how Heart came out of Seattle and you had Heart. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh shit, grunge is here. And I'd be way more interested in what happened in that time between Heart and grunge to see what had kind of changed in the Seattle music scene. If you're from Seattle, let me know down in the comments. I'm putting John Mellencamp in A tier because that's where he belongs. Do me a favor. This 4th of July, listen to his song Pink Houses, and then come back to this video, comment down below, and tell me why it shouldn't be the national anthem. Oh, but ain't that America? You can do that before or after you're done sucking down chili dogs. Next up, Jimi Hendrix is an S tier. There's not a lot to say about Jimi Hendrix that hasn't already been said. Perhaps I'm not being as controversial as I should be to get views on a YouTube video, because I am kind of preaching to the chorus here by telling you that Jimi Hendrix is good. I might as well just be saying the sun shines. You can't argue argue with it, it happens, but why am I saying it? Oh, you can say that about the rest of this video. I'm putting Journey in B tier because they're overplayed. I'm not saying that they're not good. They are good. Steve Perry's voice is awesome. But again, as a classic rock kid, I knew Journey well before any of my other cohorts in sixth grade. And when I was in middle school, Glee was a huge thing that I didn't like or watch. And of course, if you're a fan of Glee or you were around when Glee was a thing, you heard their cover of Don't Stop Believing every day. It was on the radio, it was on people's iPods, it was on TV, and I couldn't get away from it. I also couldn't get away from the conversation that was walking up to kids and telling them that, hey, you know Journey has other songs, and then them justifiably telling me to fuck off. And like, in a weird way, does that make me like a reverse hipster? Like, I liked something after it was cool, and then it became cool again, and then I wasn't cool because I was listening to it after it had gotten cool, but not when everybody else found it to be cool again. Tell me how annoying that is down in the comments. Leonard Skinner's in B tier, the original lineup of Skinner before the plane crash was fucking awesome, but they get knocked down a grade because... Um, for the South to rise again, baby. Yeah. Moving on, Led Zeppelin, or as kids know them today, Greta Van Fleet, is an S-tier band. And I will elaborate no further. Next up, we have Pink Floyd. And knowing I've made quite a few videos about music on this channel already, it's kind of amazing that I haven't talked about Pink Floyd yet. Again, this is another preaching to the choir moment here. It'd be way more controversial if I placed Pink Floyd anywhere lower than A tier. Anything that will ever need to be said about Pink Floyd has already been said. And tattooed on my body. I guess I should just say this if you've never listened to Pink Floyd before, or if you have listened to Pink Floyd before. While The Dark Side of the Moon is, in my opinion, the greatest album ever made, that their album Metal, M-E-D-D-L-E, -E, doesn't get enough praise. So if you've never listened to Pink Floyd before, I highly encourage you to check out that album in particular. And if you're a huge Pink Floyd fan, what do you think? Do you think Metal should be stacked up with Dark Side of the Moon as some of the greatest albums ever made? And I'll go as far as to say that I think Metal is better than The Wall. But at that point, how do you really compare the two? One is a heady and brain rock opera and the other is just a really good album. Moving on, I put the police in A tier. I feel like there's a direct correlation between how much band members hate each other and how good the music is. David Crosby had a great quote on this once that went along the lines of something like this. You can either make music collaboratively or competitively. While the collaborative efforts might be more fun, that doesn't necessarily translate into great commercial success. Whereas all the times that he felt that he was making music competitively, trying to one-up the members of his band, that's where he found the most commercial success. I feel like the same is true for The Police. Their breakup was very public and they hate each other and I love this clip of Stuart Copeland yelling at Sting. <laughs> That's gonna be fucking cover of Modern Drummer magazine is gonna be fucking devoted to that drum fill, well, you cunt. It's amazing that you could play it's that drum good. fill in nine beats. Right? Uh -huh. It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> just because you get lost, just because it's a little confusing for the fucking bass playing element. I also think the police really differentiate themselves between everybody else on this list because classic rock kind of has a sound, so to speak. It's very of its time, that's where rock was at the time, but the police with their rhythms don't sound like anybody else. Truly one of one. Moving on, I'm going to break the alphabetical order in which we were going with this tier list and talk about the last band that I really do not like on this list, and that's Styx. 
Styx is awesome if you were at a strip club in the 1990s and one of their songs came on. For as much as I like classic rock, that, that one never stuck. I, I, I never enjoyed it. Now they got that one song, I dig is up and lose the town, they finally found me. Like that, it, that's not bad, right? If you're new to classic rock, you can just skip Styx. Skip rocks instead. Next is The Stones, and they're obviously an S-tier classic rock band, but not for the reason that you think. I'm putting The Stones as an S-tier classic rock band for the sole reason that Keith Richards should have died 30 years ago, maybe even 40 years ago, maybe even 50 years ago, and he's still here. I will elaborate no further. Next up is Rush, and I'm going to place them in the A tier. I think apart from the Beatles, Rush is one of the more controversial bands on this list. Controversial in the sense that you can't really pick up a real firm grasp on how many people like them. I feel like I've met an absolute equal amount of people who both hate Rush and love Rush. I love Rush. I think they're great. But I also understand why people might not like Rush. Like, Getty Lee's voice isn't the best. But some people think it's nails on a chalkboard. I don't know. You tell me. I think a lot of their more famous songs like Limelight, or Working Man, or even Tom Sawyer to an extent don't really go to show just how talented of musicians these people were. These people being Getty Lee, Alex Lifeson, and Neil Peart. Neil Peart is often on the list of one of the greatest drummers of all time. And you can hear it a little bit in Tom Sawyer, but maybe not so much the other hit songs that they have. But if you're a prog rock kid who loves Polyphia, do check out YYZ or Subdivisions. And not to offend anybody, but I'm going to kind of speed the rest of these up a little bit. Super Tramp, A tier. Doobie Brothers, A tier. The doors are S tier and I await the eventual reincarnation of our lizard king, Jim Morrison. The Who is high B. I mean, they're good. That good? Nah, not really. Tom Petty is better than The Who. A tier. ZZ Top, B tier, but also better than The Who. Van Halen is S tier. I cried when Eddie Van Halen died. If you didn't cry when Eddie Van Halen died, then there is no hope for you. May God have mercy on your soul. And there it is, folks, my version of the ultimate classic rock tier list. Were there enough bands that I didn't mention in this video that I should mention in the next video? Let me know. But with that said, I've been Jerry Bees. You've been awesome. Take it easy. You're now listening to... 102.3 Real Rock FM Where we play nothing but rock Rock and more rock This ain't your granny's